Thank you, Keisha. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are around the world. We are beginning the hearing regarding the case 13,108 Paula Vanese against Argentina. I would like to welcome all those who are participating in the hearing and those who are following us as well. I would like to send a huge hug to the petitioners, Paula and Noemi. I see that they are here. And also I would like to greet the representatives of the state. This hearing is a case hearing and has a different modality to thematic hearings. Before beginning the hearing, I would like to tell you that we have some of the members of the commission. I here as president and rapporteur for memory, truth and justice. We have also the first vice president of the commission, Julissa Mantisha, that is also council rapporteur for Argentina. Also commissioner Mar 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 Margaret May Macaulay, that is also rapporteur for women's rights. And also we have the assistant executive secretary for petitions and cases, Marisol Blanchard, and also her team who have been dealing with the case. I would like to greet Marisol and Daniela Saavedra who are here today. And I also would like to greet all the members of the executive secretariat who helped us to conduct these hearings, the technical team, the photographers, and also the interpreters who are here with us today. I also would like to greet the representatives of the state and I would like to open this hearing. And for that, I would like to give the floor to Marisol Blanchard, the assistant executive secretary. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning. The instant case has to do with the alleged responsibility of the state of Argentina for the alleged lack of medical attention during the pregnancy in prison of Paula Albanese. Uh, it is also alleged that the alleged victim suffered threats, inhumane treatment and degraded treatment during her detention. On February the 23rd, uh, of 2018, the Commission decided to join the admissibility and the merits of the case. The current hearing is aimed at depending on the allegations on the merits and receive information on the current situation of the case. I would like to give the floor to the President now. Thank you, Marisol. This hearing will be conducted in the following way. First, uh, the petitioner will have 20 minutes for their allegations. After that, the state will have 20 minutes for their allegations. Then the petitioner will have five minutes to reply. Then the state will have another five minutes to reply. And after that, the members of the commission will be able to ask you questions on the case for 10 minutes. And depending on the time that we have left, I will give the floor back to the power test to before adjourning the meeting. Um, please unmute, unmute yourselves when you are not taking the floor. And you can see that there is a clock on screen. Please, representatives of the state and petitioners, let me know if you are seeing it because it's very important. Can you say it? Yes, perfect. So the clock will help you uh, take. Um, be aware of time. I will be very strict with time so that we have time for all the stages of the hearing. So we have time also for that. your reply. So if when you reach 20 minutes, I will interrupt you. Uh, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to the petitioners. Thank you. Dear commissioners and state of Argentina, thank you for allowing us to present in this hearing during the 182 period of sessions. My name is Marta Inés Mirabete Cicero, also we have Natalia Torres Santomé, Carlos Carín, Azueta Vargas, and also the victim, Paula Albanesa, Anarmi Argon, and those who were deprived of their liberty during their pregnancies. I also would like to say that Paula will explain the situation led by Augusto Albanese, her brother, in the Boto prison. He died in 2003. He had Hawkins disease and he was, oh, uh, he was under torture before being detained. And also I would like to give the floor to his daughter, Antonia Orqueda, that is helping us with the technical part of the meeting. Here we are requesting the state of Argentina 
the following as petitioners. And we've been requesting this since 2005 as human rights defenders uh, and isolation and detention during democracy and the treatment received during detention are a responsibility of the state, taking into consideration the Women's Rights Convention in Article 72 indicates the uh, rights of women, that should women should be treated as equals as men. And we need to guarantee the protection of women against any discrimination. The Convention of Elendo do Pará also understand that the Inter-American Commission can receive individual petitions that include complaints regarding violations of women's rights or by in violation of Article 7. Also, here we have the situation of women who were deprived of their liberty while being pregnant. They suffer harassment, threats, um, inhuman treatment, torture, institutional violation, and this psychological, physical, social uh, criminalization and exclusion and violence. According to Article 9 of the law, it establishes that the um, degrading and inhumane treatment should be prohibited. And also another law talks about the comprehensive protection in order to prevent eradicate any type of violation against women. And it defines institutional violation as one of the modes of violence against women. With regard to the facts and evidence, we would like to say the facts, the petitioners and their brother were deprived of their liberty in 2002 because of the alleged violation of Article 23737. Paula Nomi were admitted in unit number four in Ezeiza in 2002, while Jorge was sent to the Devoto prison unit. After that, they were released in 2005, according to uh, the file of the case. But the judge in charge of the case appealed that resolution. But the Court of Appeals uh, confirmed their release. Evidence once. The court did not give access to the petitioners to the case file. That is a violation of the right to defense. Also, we have another evidence that it has to say that in the file, we see that the victims uh, receive very good uh, assessments by the different uh, penitentiary officials. And also what we see is that there are several summary reports regarding the inhuman treatment received by the alleged victims. We know that some of the prison officials had several complaints for violation of the rights of women. And also Chief Silva sent some of the inmates in order to hurt Paula Albanese. Also, Ms. Ms. Sanchez, that was also an officer in the prison. She has a summary case because of the death of inmate Angela Mercedes in 1999 in word number two. Then we have C, Chief Marcela Sanchez. She omitted the evidence for the 152 habeas corpus that were presented and she was aware of all the acts of violence that were committed. This is also included in the file. At the time, Paula Albanese states, I was beaten in the morning and I had to be admitted in the ER room of the penitentiary unit. Also, we have also the statement of Silvana Leana that was in word number eight with Paula Albanese. She says, Chief Silva, and Chief Sanchez Marcela, and Chief Silva said, you are nobody to the inmates. And if you want, I can isolate you. And there are other detainees and inmates who are still in prison uh, 
receive this threat and he said you will be hurt if you do not obey and then we see also that chief marcela Ch sanchez said to the inmates habeas corpus are not your issue evidence for chief amalia rosa toro director of the unit after the riot of 1996 she threatened me and also many of the inmates. Evidence number five, Paula Albanese was sanctioned for visiting her brother because she decided to be searched by Dr. Waldo Lopez. She didn't want her intimate parts to be uh, examined by an, an unknown officer also in the case file we can read that during that sanction we have miss mesa miss dia and their superior marcela sanchez were involved in that uh, penalty and sanction also we have one of the inmates who denounced and reported the torture committed against paula's sister uh, and Paula Albanesa was sent to an isolation cell and she received psychological and physical violence. And she was sent to the medical area of the prison center of the prison. And she was eight pregnant, uh, eight months pregnant, and she was left without any attention. Nobody knows what happens during her isolation. The victim was beaten, she suffered coercion, and there was a danger for her baby and for her. She was left in a room for several hours before being attended by the doctors. Evidence number five. Paula Albanese suffered several lesions when, while she was transferred. She was... Um, suffered several uh, be, um, violence on her head, on her arm, on her leg. We have also here some of the officers who participated, for example, Veronica Masaryk, the Hilda Silva, and several of the, offers, of the officers were involved. However, that case was considered self lesion Also, we have Dr. Patricia Morosini, who said that the victim uh, hurt herself. And the doctor who treated her also said that there were several lesions on her arm, on her leg, on her head, but he said that there are two uh, bruises on the head and also two bruises, linear bruises on the leg and on the arm, on the left part of the body. This has been signed by Galeano. And Paula decided not to sign that report. Then there is an, another administrative proceeding. And regarding that administrative proceeding, we would like to say that the state of Argentina is well aware of this case and that they are well aware of all the petitions that we have presented before the Inter-American Inter Commission. Now I would like to give the floor to Paula and Noemi. Good morning, my name is Noemi. Are we okay now? Can you hear me? We have echo. Maybe you are using different devices in the same room and that creates echo. So please only keep one device unmuted. No, it's not working. I think you are with a lot of echo. Uh, if you agree, let's stop the 
clock. Stop the clock. And let's see if you can solve this. Because sometimes there are several people that have their own devices. Good morning, can you hear me? Now it's working, that's better. Go ahead. My name is Noemi Falcón. I'm the wife of Jose, of Jose Augusto Albanese. What we live was horrible. He was sick. I took care of him. They took us to the prison and And I have continued with my life. I have two sons. I try not to remember all the things that I went through because that hurts me. I was pregnant for the first time. I was full of hope. With my husband, we were happy with that, but they told me that my pregnancy had issues and I couldn't believe that because my baby was moving. I could hear the heart of the baby every time that I had an ultrasound. At that time, we have some issues with my husband and for the issues that we went through after that uh, will be explained by Paula because I remember that I was in shock. In November, they told me that my baby was dead. Then they took the baby out of my belly three days after they told me that the baby was dead. They induct uh, the pregnancy so that it's um, a natural. I don't want this to happen to anybody. I'm really nervous. It's been 16 years. That's all the time that we have waited for, for this hearing. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Paula Albanese. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity so that you can listen to me and for what we've been through. We were innocent. My family was all in prison. My brother was with Hodgkin's disease, an incurable disease. Judge Pecha uh, denied any kind or any sort of medical attention to him. The lawyer requested his house arrest or for him to be taken to the hospital because he was in a critical condition. But the judge did not allow any medical controls any medical checks. But my brother died a year after at the Belezarfield Hospital as if he were an animal. And I remember that uh, some of the, the lawyer was asking he, the judge to allow him to remove the handcuffs because he was dying. And since he was detained, he had no rights to health to access health services. He had cerebral death already. Uh, he died while he was handcuffed and um, tied in, and he was innocent, but the judge denied any request for treatment. My sister-in-law was pregnant. I, her, his sister, I was pregnant, I suffered abuse, I was beaten. I also received sexual offers by Chief Silva when I decided not to accept, when my inmate uh, colleagues decided not to say no for being changed of, to a different unit, the girls at the unit had to paid with sex in order to be transferred. And when I started to report this, to denounce this, that in spite of being in prison, whether guilty or innocent, we shouldn't be 
subject to this punishment because the only punishment is the lack of liberty. But I realized that we were being abused by all the authorities. It was an institution. I told this to Chief Silva on his face. You are the internal security chief. You need to go home by knowing that we are being taken care of because only the judge can decide on us. But Chief Silva, Chief Sanchez, Chief Escudera, Director Toro, Chief Mesa, what they did was to abuse of their authority when we were inmates. We presented several complaints, 52 habeas corpus recourses in a single day. I remember that I, uh, I presented a complaint against Chief Silva. Some inmates who complained did not come back. I was disappeared for 10 hours. I was isolated and I remember that I have Chief Silva, I was tightened up to a bench and they were all around me. I was pregnant at the time and they wanted to isolate me because I told them the truth. I was punished several times in unit three for telling the truth or for defending my inmate colleagues who were being abused. I ended up in a medical center isolated. Then they returned me to a common world after four years, after having work and study at university, uh, at the prison. Uh, I was sent to the same world when you are admitted. I was pregnant, all the beds were together, the toilets were not working. I was punished alive. So what do I feel? I was not protected in order to protect themselves. My brother is dead. My sister-in-law lost her baby. She was tortured. She was left with her baby dead. And she was made to have a natural labor or a natural delivery. And that was torture because the baby was dead. And then when I was pregnant, I had to deliver without uh, any painkiller. I was at risk all the time while I was pregnant. One of my colleagues, one of the inmates requested my transfer because I was denouncing Chief Silva because he was torturing us. And I went, for example, to one of the chiefs, but you could not say anything. Everything that you said against the unit, you were punished for that. When you file a writ of amparo or an habeas corpus, or, there were retaliations. And for example, one of the words were, one of the words, words uh, was for isolation. And if we reported any of the bosses, the chiefs, the directors of the unit, you were uh, sent the bad inmates that beat you. Uh, they sent me while I was pregnant to be beaten by other inmates. I know that this is coming to an end, but I want to make this clear. It was not about the deprivation of liberty because that can be solved in a trial. We lost three lives. That of my brother, uh, the estate was absent and he received no medical attention. I have, we lost our niece who was born dead. She died in the valley of my sister-in-law and also the death of my mother also my father had a heart attack and now and then a stroke and he cannot do anything now i there are so many things to say i never took drugs there was a failure in the proceedings there was a mistake in justice I was dismissed without any charges. My sister-in-law was released without any charges. 
while the rest of my family died. And we were left with anything because we are poor, because we don't have education. Thank you. I'm sorry if I get this angry because I need justice. Dear commissioners, I know we still have some questions before the questions and for the state to speak. As I have said before, we believe in our to the persons who are responsible in the Ministry of uh, Justice. But in democracy, these authorities of the penitentiary service still torture and ill treat inmates. And I know that all these chiefs and officials, because I already suffered this. Silva also tried to negotiate it with me in 1996. Paula also lived that, but I did not have the possibility to speak. And Erika Smith did not have the chance to speak, uh, or Erika, who almost lost her eye. We want this to be a democracy, human rights, in prisons and we want the officials that are part of the penitentiary system to respect human rights thank you to the representative of the petitioners and i want to tell the petitioners that you should not apologize for your testimonies because this is a space to listen to you so please do not apologize that's the idea for you to give your testimonies. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the state for 20 minutes. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning to everyone. I would like to thank the Honorable Commission for this invitation to participate in this public hearing. Especially, I would like to thank the presentation made by the petitioners and the brave uh, testimonies that we have just heard. So thank you to Ana Paula Marta. Madam President, I would like to present to the delegation of the state, the Undersecretary of Protection, Human Rights, Andrea Pochat, the National Director of Legal Affairs in uh, regarding human rights, FLEXE, and legal advisor of such agency, Dr. Rodrigo Robles Istan. I am Gabriel uh, Javier Salgado, and I'm part of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. With your um, authorization, I will give the floor to Dr. Andrea Pochat to make the state's presentation. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon to the commissioners. We will give the floor to Dr. Flexi, who's going to start the presentation. Thank you, Madam President, commissioners. First of all, I would like to greet the ad hoc executive secretary, the staff, and especially Paula Albanese, their lawyer, as well. I would like to highlight this hearing is the third we have had this year to deal with pending cases. This hearing has shown the dedication to deal with these uh, issues on behalf of the, um, by the commission. It is related to women deprived of their liberty. The second case brought up by Marta, Dr. Marta Mirabel, we in this occasion with Paula Albanese, on behalf of the Secretariat of Human Rights of the State of Argentina, I would like to highlight the commitment for the defense of women who suffer institutional violence in the context of imprisonment. Madam President, Regarding Paula Albanese, first of all, I, I would say that we have studied five um, files uh, and several administrative proceedings. Our conclusions are based on a careful uh, work respectfully of the inter-American system. The first conclusion is that Paula Albanese suffered a punishment that resulted in its uh, isolation in June 2005 for several hours and according to records she was six months pregnant that record uh, is part of the files 
the Bangkok rules, Mandela's, and the good best practice of this commission prohibit this kind of punishment. Taking into consideration the documentation, we have noticed that she was not she did not receive medical attention, which she should have taken into account uh, the kind of isolation she had to go through. Miss Albanese suffered punishment that affected in a disproportionate way her right to personal integrity. Having said that and taking into an account the analysis of the criminal action, we do not share the following allegations related to other ill treatment that have to do with physical, psychological treatment, um, violence, or the lack of judicial protection or medical attention. In connection with the other ill treatment events, there were two parallel uh, complaints that were filed before the Supreme Court and the Federal Court that dismissed them. During the investigation, the medical experts issued a report in 2005, several hours after the sanction was implemented. Uh, Albanese did not have any traumatic injuries. Albanese says she was not physically injured and did not have any uh, lesions. In 2006, the judge considered there were no, there was no evidence to continue with this complaint. And regarding the investigation of the complaints filed by Ms. Albanese and other women against the penitentiary, there was also an investigation opened. Although Mrs. Albanese had filed a complaint in 2005. She, that same month, she disregarded that complaint. She also expressed that she did not have any problems uh, with the Federal Penitentiary Service. And the conclusion was a lack of existence of a crime. This was based on the lack of evidence to uh, prove um, any injuries. Madam President, commissioners, the commission does not have information to prove the lack of due diligence, judicial protection or medical attention regarding Miss um, Albanese. She, Miss Albanese was uh, received medical attention during her detention. Good morning. I am Rodrigo Robles, Madam President, commissioners. I could like to say that we deeply respect the pain suffered by the victims after the death of Mr. Albanese and um, the baby. We would like to say that there's no responsibility of the state of Argentina. The file shows that Ms. Albanese promoted several habeas corpus saying that the pregnancy of Mrs. Uh, Falcon uh, was an anencephalic pregnancy. She also indicated that Miss Falcon was protected. She was with her and received medical attention. Afterwards, she uh, disregarded this uh, by saying that she lacked uh, medical attention and the conditions of the tensions were aggravated. The judge um, ordered a med medical experts report regarding the state of Ms. Falcon. That report shows that Ms. Falcon con decided to continue with her pregnancy in spite of the uh, problems that were detected. Take into account her decision, Ms. Falcon decided to have a high complexity status and be under the control of an aesthetic uh, hospital. Regarding the last uh, report by the petitioners, the uh, baby died in November 2013 before the uh, pregnancy got to term due to the anencephalic pregnancy. Internal domestic resources were not exhausted as the habeas corpus uh, was not received. Also, the um, file was presented in August 2003. So 
Ms. Falcon had medical attention and diagnosis that the condition affecting her baby was irreversible and that she received information regarding her decision. Also, in March 2006, it was determined that there was a lack of crime and also domestic resources were not exhausted in this sense. At the time of the death, Mr. Albanese had received a transplant due to the Hodgkin lymphoma seven years ago. The disease was in full remission by then. That concluded that Mr. Albanese's death was caused by a stroke and that the detention conditions did not have anything to do with that. To conclude, I would like to say that we are going to send you the information uh, to prove uh, that non-repetition measures have been satisfied. Also, I would like to mention three measures that we consider to be relevant in this sense. First of all, the absolute prohibition of isolation or disciplinary segregation of pregnant women established by the bill that the executive of power has presented, modifying the penitentiary um, uh, policies take into account the recommendations made by the Honorable Commission in the case Lean. And this includes several modifications in compliance with inter-American standards. Second, the adoption of normatives regarding obstetric uh, treatment and medical attention for pregnant women or those who live with their babies uh, in prison regarding the investigation of tortures and ill treatment uh, under custody, whether they are not the consequence of uh, criminal actions. Also, the development of a National Committee for the Prevention of Torture together with other bodies, um, state bodies with uh, jurisdiction. In conclusion, we understand that the Commission may adopt a decision based on the acknowledgement of the responsibility of the state and establish the corresponding responsibility or reparation in implementing individual reparations, taking into account that the state has also implemented several non-repetition measures. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that the representatives of the state has concluded their presentation. You have some time left, but yes, the state has concluded its observations. Okay, thank you. So, now I will give back the floor to the petitioners. Just one comment, Madam President. I'm sorry. Just to say there are two things that were mentioned in the allegations that are related to the uh, pregnant the delivery that was induced to Miss Falcon and the fact that Mr. Urbanese died uh, while being handcuffed. Those circumstances had been referred to in the uh, documents presented before the commission. Thank you. I will give back the floor to the petitioners for five minutes. The only thing I'm going to explain in these five minutes is that the state of Argentina needs to guarantee the existence of conditions that protect, safeguard the rights of the persons deprived of liberty, and they are responsible for the torture and personal integrity of the victims who were under their custody. But once again, we see that penitentiary authorities exercise um, control over persons under their custody coercion, harassment, and ill treatment. You know about this because of the reports we present from the several organizations, because they continue to have the same behaviors they had during their dictatorship. Those of us who have been in prison, we know that there are two types of treatments, that of corruption and that according to uh, human rights. 
whether there are neoliberal or popular governments. In this case, there was no human dignity regarding health and the request of a home imprisonment or for the life or for the death of Mr. Albanese. Paula La lived several harassments, uh, especially because she participated in the riot in 1996. Miss Falcon knew that her uh, she had an anencephalic pregnancy and she could not participate in the burial of her baby with her family. Regarding violation of international uh, law, we say that torture due to the violation not to suffer degrading inhuman treatment or torture enshrined in Article 5.2 of the American Convention, also in the Convention to Prevent and Punish uh, Torture, the Convention to Prevent and Eradicate Violence Against Women, Personal Integrity enshrined in Article 5 of the American Convention under Article 4 of the Belendu Para Convention, due diligence, due to lack of investigation for the violation of the rights suffered by victims in Article 8 and 25 of the American Convention. And once again, a delay by the state to provide attention to victims. Article 26 of the American Convention, 10 of the protocol of the convention in terms of economic and social rights of the El Salvador protocol and gender. This is another case involving gender in women, the type of liberty, the right to women um, and try, the right women have to live uh, free from violence as established in the Belandupara Convention. There is a delay in the implementation of public policy for penitentiary, penitentiaries. There is a lack of equality, whether by the legislative, judicial, and executive uh, powers. There still exists a patriarchal um, system. That's why within the framework of the reparation, we ask for the creation of uh, police uh, development of public policies with a general approach to establish a collective task force, create mechanisms for human rights defenders when we denounce these irregularities, when there that there are no uh, limitations to the participation that there is a special prosecutor for these uh, specific cases of violence. Also, an analysis of uh, the officials working within the penitentiary system for the state to uh, investigate uh, administratively, disciplinarily, all the officials involved. That there is a program to train women with a human rights approach, an auditor uh, that is trained with a gender approach to incorporate a program on law with a gender approach that is uh, transversal and horizontal in state organism. We request the commission to guarantee the petitioner's uh, right in order to not to suffer any harassment as human rights defenders, because we have been attacked and we have uh, had several actions because of our uh, work. Thank you. Thank you to the petitioners. I will now give the floors, floor to the state for five minutes. Thank you, Madam President. We just want to clarify once again, we acknowledge Dr. Mirabete's work, the petitioners for the participation in this hearing and the perspective of the state regarding persons deprived of liberty, particularly women. We share the interest of continuing improving the attention of uh, persons. We share our commitment to keep on progressing to protect persons deprived of liberty, especially women. The Ministry of Women it has a specific uh, team working on these aspects. And in this hearing, we need to analyze 
due to the commitment to the human rights work and the inter-American system, we need to analyze this specific case. And in light of the documents, the particular analysis we carried out and the detailed analysis of the different uh, criminal actions, we are able to acknowledge their responsibility in this specific uh, event that has to do with disciplinary sanction regarding isolation suffered by Ms. Albanese. In connection with the other alleged violations, we do not share the allegations of the petitioners regarding the admissibility or the merits. If we were in a thematic hearing, probably we could agree with Ms. Mirabete regarding measures, but uh, we will present a document before the commission. There are many measures adopted by the state of Argentina to move forward to recognize the rights of persons deprived of liberty, taking into account the um, events that have been mentioned in this hearing. Thank you. Thank you to the representatives of the estate. First of all, I believe it's very important to acknowledge the partial acknowledgement of responsibility made by the estate from the perspective of the commission. That is an important progress made. It's going to be valued in the report. And clearly, there is a set of requests regarding human rights violations that have been mentioned by the petitioners and the commission will need to assess this in light of the arguments presented by the petitioners before giving the floor to the country rapporteur and the rapporteur on the on women's rights i just want to ask a question in connection with what the state has said the petitioners have made a series of recommendations or proposals regarding uh, women deprived of liberty i understand by what the um, state has said in a thematic hearing you could discuss those public policies but i could like to ask the petitioners and the state whether well you have listed a series of proposals i understand these are uh, proposals for reparation of this specific case and also structural reparation so one of my question is what ways of reparations the petitioners uh, good, uh, could be established by the state to repair human rights violations and that was my doubt these are uh, reparations regarding structural issues. You know that in, in their Mary's reports, the commission makes several uh, recommendations, structural ones as well. So I would like Marta Binavete to explain whether these reparations uh, are structural reparations. And also I would like to listen to the state in order to know whether that set of uh, recommendations made, what is the current situation? I don't know if there's already a public policy in that regard, or there are policies that need to be reinforced, or there's a lack of policies regarding these recommendations. That is my question. And now I'll give the floor to Commissioner Mantilla, country reporter. Thank you, Madam President. I would like first to greet the representatives of the state, the petitioners. I would like to thank their presence today. And I would like to recognize what the state has said regarding the acknowledgement of responsibility in a partially manner, in a partial manner. I would like to ask a question to the petitioners. Paula talked about sexual violence and the request of sexual favors instead of their chances and so on. So I would like to know whether that, apart from reporting this, uh, there was, was there any protocol so that she could report or denounce these facts? That is my first question. The second, 
is regarding reparations. Apart from the question made by the president, I would like to know if you have your own reparations, how you feel, would feel repaired. This is a question for the victims. And in addition, I would like to make a comment regarding something said by uh, the state, uh, because there were some allegations that the brother of Paula died uh, handcuffed. I don't know if you had presented this before or not. This is uh, to have some cl clarity. And also I would like to know about investigations that could have been initiated against those officials or officers that were linked to these specific facts related to the instant case, if there were sanctions, punishments, or anything. I understand that the representatives of the state talked about a structural programs, but I would like to know what things are being implemented if there is an investigation into the facts um, if, against the officials. That are my questions. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to give the floor now to Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, that is Rapporteur for Women's Rights. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I greet all the parties present. And um, since we were time barred to, not to hang around, I'll go straight to um, some questions. I uh, adopt the questions which have been put by my, my sister, first vice president, um, Pulisa. And in addition to it, I just want to ask what has been done now to keep male officers, whatever their position is, however senior they are, away from women in custody of the state, um, because they really should not be within the confines uh, where women are in, in close custody. And what, what is happening now? And what was happening then? And was any action taken against, I forget the name of the, the um, chief um, who um, sought um, sexual favors from the declarant who, who spoke about it. And also um, the, what, how, and a question to, to the petitioning parties, how do you evaluate the current treatment of pregnant women um, by the authorities in the now federal penitentiary complex um, for number four for women? And how do you compare that to what was in existence then when you were uh, um, in custody there? And also, um, do, you, do you consider that the, the a change in the regulations or practices in Argentina is necessary now, even now, um, to prevent the situation which happened to Mrs. Albanese, her brother and sister-in-law from ever happening again. Do you think that the, the, you need more regulations and to be implemented uh, by the state? Uh, um, and in relation to the state, I do want to just make this, I want to make this comment that when you have pregnant women in your custody, you are responsible for two people, the, the woman and the baby. And so every effort has to be made to keep them in good health and safe from all forms of violence and abuses. And it seems that this was not in fact done in, in these, in relation to the, the case here. Uh, I do thank the state for its partial um, accept, uh, acknowledgement of responsibility, but I think there are certain questions which remain unanswered um, in thing. It seemed there was no mention of any of the officers being uh, um, investigated on any even administrative action taken against them or criminal action of any kind, nor were, were their jobs similarly ever in jeopardy for what was happening. So could you give us some information on this? You can send it in writing, it need not be now because I know time is the going. And in relation to training of officers, 
uh, and, and those in the justice system generally and in the prison system particularly. Um, how is this done? How consistent is it? How, how, for instance, I'm sure there is a change of the staff. Do you have treatment whenever a new staff member comes in or five um, staff members come in? And do you consistently do revisions in order for them to understand the rights of women and especially pregnant women uh, um, and how they ought to be treated? And is there a public policy for the protection and accompaniment of victims of human rights violations uh, of, in relation to uh, those deprived of liberty and their families, whilst they are deprived of liberty? Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner May Macaulay. I don't know if the Assistant Executive Secretary Marisol Blanchard would like to ask any questions. No, if not, I would like to give the floor first to the petitioners and after that to the state. You will have 10 minutes uh, at a maximum to answer. Uh, you don't have to reply all the questions right now, so you can send that information in writing after. So first I would like to give the floor to the petitioners. Dear Commissioner Urrejola, with regard to reparation, what they've been called, we, uh, they gone through and what their family has gone through cannot be repaired. But the state can guarantee a better quality of life or psychological support since they have no psychological support to date. So far, they received no support by the state or nor by the different administrations of the state. The state listened to us, we have an internal hearing to present these issues, but because of the COVID-19, we did not have other meetings, but the state is now hearing our claim. With regard to the questions answered by Commissioner Mantilla, I, Paula will answer uh, the different complaints regarding sexual violations, and there are several sexual violations complaints and the state could listen to them because there are several witnesses. I was detained at that unit in 1996 and I also saw that there were violations and many, many women in order to have a better situation accepted to uh, or give up to these sexual favor requests. But many of them do not want to speak. And with regard to the situation of Jose, there is no information. The state and the judge that acted in the case uh, uh, decided against the release of the victims by taking into consideration Article 46.2 of the convention that reads that when there is no judicial uh, guarantees or protection, you have to go to the Inter-American Commission because when it's a neutral space with no place for corruption. And I would like to say that the court of Lomas de Zamora, if we review their work and their actions, we will see that there are several complaints that were closed, that were not investigated by the court. And regarding the questions asked by DR Margaret May Macaulay, I would like to say that the penitentiary unit includes men and women. Uh, some of them respect human rights and others don't. Unfortunately, there are men in the prisons, in the wards, and also in the corridors of the penitentiary units. Can we include cameras? That could be a way of monitoring the situation. This is done in other penitentiary units. But what's important is to discuss how we can improve conditions or at uh, penitentiary units. Also, there are several complaints against Chief Silva. Um, not only from the time 
when Paula was at the prison, but also from before. Uh, if he had had a good conduct, the riot of 1996 would not have occurred. And regarding the complaints, they are because of the past, but also because of the current situation. We are in touch with the Ministry of Justice, with the Ministry for Women, and we need changes because we don't want these situations to happen again. For women, they are colleagues, they share the cells with me, but also we want this not to happen for mothers and women in Unit 31. And I'm going to add something, I didn't say, say this before. In Unit 31, there are men that were detained because of their crimes committed during their, their dictatorship. And there is a judge that put them there because they could not put them in a men prison because of the attacks they would suffer. And we were claiming about this situation and we have military officers from the dictatorship in unit four of the penitentiary. And we don't want this judge and these military officers to be in a women's ward. I have four minutes left. I don't know if you would like to add anything else. Maybe I can read the conclusions because we believe that Me Too has to do also with the deprivation of liberty and that Paula and Noemi, after their release, they have no guarantees, no right to a fair trial. Um, no, they have no guarantees from human rights organizations or from the state. Many of them told us to forget our pain and pain cannot be forgotten. And I want to support my colleagues who want to raise their voices. And that's why we are here. We want change to happen, to have real public policies, to change the situation in uh, centers of deprivation of liberty. We need, because the state did not take into consideration the complaints and has not investigated this because Chief Toro was also the director of the penitentiary center. In spite of all the complaints that were against her, we cannot have this situation in times of democracy. And we women, we are survivors. We are more than three. And we are members of a group of Argentine women that want to make these facts visible because we would like to denounce the tortures and harassment that occurs in democracy times. I'm sorry to repeat this, we're in democracy, but security forces do not care about democracy. And they don't care about what they are doing or what the colleagues in the Ministry of Justice are doing. We don't want violations uh, by the state, memory, truth, and justice in times of democracy. These are omissions on the side of the state. Thank you for allowing us and to raise our voices on behalf of those who cannot speak. Some of them are dead and others because we are human rights defenders. Can I add anything else? We have two minutes. Yes, you can speak, Paula. I would like to say some things. First, the state had just said that he was in a remission for seven years. Uh, she, he was, he received a transplant, but how can they know that my brother did not die because of the Hopkins disease? I would like to know if they know the hospital in which he was treated because the judge uh, did not send him to a hospital for his treatment. And I would like to quote the words of a person that was detained. And my words did not 
were, were not important, were not taken into consideration when I was detained. Because at the time, uh, the authority and the ones that have the power are those that are in charge of the penitentiary unit. There, is, there are no documents, there are no recordings, there are no witnesses, because when I encourage my colleagues, my partners, my, the other inmates uh, to complain, they were submitted to sexual, psychological and physical violence. But when we started to denounce, most of us were beaten, were isolated, were threatened. When if uh, the inmates, inmates disappear, um, her children came to the unit and also went to the voto. When the, her husband received a threat, if she continued to threaten the officers of unit three, their children were going to disappear. They threatened them with that. I reported, I complained about that, but inmates were trans other areas of the country. They were beaten. And my brother was beaten in spite of the fact that he was ill. So one of the prosecutors could not understand how our family was in prison. Sorry for all of this, but I needed to say this. One more second. We need the current state or the, the current officials of the state to know that one of the reports, number six, is there at the Supreme Court of Justice. And there is corruption there. You cannot deny that. Former governments before this one, none of them responded for the case involved in that complaint that involved 11 women. I was a survivor because they wanted to transfer me to La Pampa. And I told them, you cannot transfer me. But Chief Silva and Toro wanted to transfer me. We are survivors and we need justice. We need things to change. We don't want these people to be detained, but we want the state to give us guarantees. If we are deprived of their, our liberty, we need to have guarantees during that period of time. Thank you, petitioners and the alleged victims for your testimonies and for the information that you provided us with regarding the case, but also regarding the structural situation. But it would be very important for the commission to listen to the state regarding the questions made by my colleagues and by myself, especially regarding the instant case. For example, what Commissioner Manticia asked regarding the situation of Paul Albanese's brother, and if this was reported before in the case, or if that is a new allegation that you are making. I would like to thank the alleged victims for the information and for all the testimonies and also don't say sorry, it's okay. I would like to give the floor to the state now. Thank you again. As we said before, we will send a document in writing to supplement our presentation in this hearing. And you will see there a detailed analysis of each of the legal and administrative proceedings that we uh, have monitored and identified regarding the instant case. And you will have detailed information regarding all the proceedings and all the complaints and how they were resolved in justice. And we also would like to answer some of the questions regarding the structural measures for uh, repar repairing persons deprived of their liberty. One of the biggest challenges that Argentina faces has to do with the uh, rights of persons deprived of their liberty. And there was a change, for example, between the past and the present. And uh, because of the complaints and the claims of different social movements, uh, we have a national system to prevent torture. We established this mechanism that includes also the National Committee to Prevent Torture. This is also to comply with, with the protocol of the United Nations to prevent torture. And 
this uh, regulation was passed by the National Congress and was then implemented with the creation of the National Committee. And this project was led by 20 social movements and we have a mixed committee. And we have representatives of social organizations, human rights defenders in the National Committee to prevent torture. And this committee has a specific budget and it coordinates its work with local mechanisms uh, on each, in each jurisdiction. We have the local, uh, the federal system that is the national penitentiary system that works together with the National Committee to prevent torture. It's been a huge challenge for that mechanism to exist and to be implemented. And I think that it's important that we provide detailed information about this. I, we understand that the commission is well aware of this system and this mechanism, but we will send detailed information about it. Also, I would like to mention that last year, uh, the president of Argentina decided to create the Ministry of Women, Gender and Diversity. And for us is an important um, fact for Argentina's history. We try to address the different types of violence uh, or gender, different types of gender violence, including women deprived of their liberty. And we are going to provide a specific information regarding the work that we are conducting and uh, the change gamer uh, the, that this is. Also regarding, I would like to quote the judgment of the Inter-American Commission regarding the Lynn case. We are working together with the Human Rights Secretariat and the Ministry of Justice. And we, the executive branch and the president of Argentina presented last year before the National Congress a, a draft to uh, reform uh, the criminal law, especially when it comes to the disciplinary system. And that includes Article 82K, that it's fundamental and that collects the international standards and it prohibits the application of isolation measures for persons deprived of their liberty that are pregnant or that are living with their children. I think that's fundamental and we are working strongly so that the Congress uh, addresses this draft or this bill presented by the president of Argentina. I would like to give the floor to my colleagues so that they can present some other information. Thank you, Madam President. Regarding the introduction of several comments made, there are several documents that have been presented during the 15 or 16 years of the case. There's no reference in that regard. Regarding criminal actions, uh, Dr. Kletzel say there's going to be a decision issued this week regarding eight different cases that are related to this particular case. The general characteristics of the proceedings, the investigations, they have been open ex officio and they have been fostered by the judicial branch in the three cases there have been reports published by the um, medical experts, for example, the case of Mr. Albanese. And after an ex officio investigation carried out by the uh, Courts of Appeals of La Plata, there was a conclusion published by the medical experts regarding his death and pre existing disease. These are the characteristics. They all had experts supporting judicial decisions due to the lack of crime, the lack of evidence. These cases were filed. And finally, to conclude, in connection to the guarantees and the possible uh, exhaustion of domestic resources before the Commission, I believe it's important to distinguish between the appeals that have been presented in the main uh, criminal action 
in connection to the alleged responsibility, the criminal action related to that, those appeals were rejected in different stages. So both Ms. Falcon and Albanese in Albanese's case were dismissed the impugnation of evidence or decisions in connection to the actions that are being presented before the Inter-American Commission. And we're going to take down notes of the different questions asked by the commissioners to incorporate this information in our written response. I would like to send my regards to Marta Paula, because I understand that their testimony is very important and it's important for us to listen to them. Okay, thank you once again to the petitioners, Paula, Noemi, her daughter who's over there as well. Thank you for your testimonies and I believe this is an important space for the elect victims to present their testimonies. In that sense, I would like to thank the estate for their empathy in spite of the uh, differences regarding the international responsibility of the estate. It's important to highlight when a state is being empathic, empathetic. And uh, I will ask you to please send us all the information that you are supposed to send to us. And I don't know if I'm making a mistake, but I think this is a case. I was looking at the file and I apologize to the country reporter or Marisol if I'm mistaken, but I don't know if there has been a friendly settlement in this case because beyond the differences, I see that this may be the case. I do not know whether there has been a friendly settlement before, but I think this uh, could happen. Commissioner Mantilla or um, Secretary Blanchard, could you let me know if I, whether I'm mistaken? If there was no friendly settlement, I invite you to meet. You have the petitioner said there was a meeting and due to the pandemic, you could not continue with that. And I think it's very important to move forward in that direction in order to discuss the various reparations for the violations. The commission is at the disposal of the parties so that you can uh, meet and reach a friendly settlement. I don't know whether my colleagues would like to add further information before we adjourn this meeting. No? Okay. So thank you once again to everyone who has participated here today. And we will continue following up this case. And I send my regards to Antonia, to Paula, to Noemi. Thank you to the representatives of the estate as well. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you.